Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode we're going to be taking a look at this product here. This is the Mach 1 Level 2 EVSE for your home made by Apex Charger. So we're going to dive in today, we're going to take a look at everything in the box, we're going to put it through its paces, we're going to test it like we do all the other chargers on this channel, and we're going to see if this is the right charger for you. Hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back. So Paul here with another product review, and this one's gonna be pretty cool. So this is a level two EVSC made by Apex Charger. So this is their Mach 1 version of their level two EVSC. It's actually their first EVSC on the market. And this one stands out from the crowd a little bit as far as it goes on paper. So it was really cool for me to be able to sit down with Apex Charger and actually talk about their two chargers they have on the market right now. This is the Mach 1, and they also have the Mach 2, which will be coming out very soon, if not already by the time I post this video. And I'm sure I'll have a review on that in the near future as well. But this is the Mach 1, which is sort of what they would call their entry-level charger or EVSE. And I don't know how much I would consider this to be entry level because based on the features and the specs of this, I would say this is a pretty fully packed charger. But we're gonna have to dive in and find out for ourselves. So let's go ahead and do that today. So here we are, we got this really nice box. It was all wrapped up in plastic when we received it. And this is the box that it comes in. So as you can see, it's not a very large box. It's actually quite small from the other ones that I've seen. So really this means that the charger is probably a little bit smaller than some of the other ones on the market. Cause I've reviewed some pretty large chargers. I mean, even like the Tesla wall connectors are really long. They're really tall chargers. Of course that also is because it has the built-in cable management, but still, it's still cool to see that a charger could fit in this box. Now, one of the things that Apex Charger does to set itself aside from the pack is actually, they kind of say you get everything you need in the box to make this happen. Now, obviously that's not 100% true because you do need some electrical work to be done if you don't already have that done. But, um, it's really kind of cool how they have this set up, and we're gonna dive more into that in just a little bit. But just off the bat, I can see you get a bag with some tools in it, so you get some screwdrivers here. So it's really nice that they include screwdrivers with this. They, at least they give you some tools in your box. You can look through them and, and grab what you need, so that's really cool to see. I can already see some RFID cards back here, so really nice. We'll go through that bag in a little bit, kind of discuss everything you get in that bag, because there is quite a bit in there. Uh, looks like here we have a really cool, and I'm, this is the thing I'm kind of excited about. So this is a J1772 charger. So it does have the J1772 handle. It's down here somewhere. We'll pull that out in a minute. However, Apex Chargers doesn't want to alienate anybody from buying their charger. So if you are a Tesla owner and you want to use this charger, but let's say you don't want to use the adapter that you have in your Tesla, or maybe your Tesla didn't come with an adapter because you bought it used or something like that. Well, what's really cool about Apex Charger is they actually include the J1772 to Tesla adapter, and here it is. So really kind of nice of them to include an adapter in the box with the charger. I do not know of any other EVSC on the market that includes the J1772 to Tesla adapter in the box, but that is really cool to see. It's really nice. I'm just curious. Let's take a look at this real quick. It appears that it has an 80 amp max rating on this adapter as well. So that is awesome to see as well, an 80 amp uh, rating on that, which you don't see very many of these on the market with 80 amp. Usually they're 60. Some of them are as low as 48 amps because that's the maximum that most Teslas can take but 80 amp adapter included in the box. So awesome to see that um, you get an adapter with the charger. So they wanna feel like, hey, we don't wanna just sell this charger to the J1772 people. They know that you know J3400 is new standard for 
most new cars being manufactured starting at the end of this year, 2024. So they were really cool to include the adapter in the box and say, hey, listen, if you have a J1772 car now, but let's say you buy a Ford Mustang Mach-E next year and it has a J3400 plug on it, guess what? Boom. We'll give you the adapter. We want to make sure we don't miss anything. So really, really cool. Right here in the middle of the box, it looks like we get a cable wrap that goes on the wall so you can wrap your cable around. Now this looks like one of those pretty standard ones that you get with a lot of chargers out here. So really nothing special as far as I could tell. But once we get it installed, we'll take a look at it a little bit closer. But nice that they include a cable management solution in the box as well. Ah. Now, here is the cable. Now, we're going to have to do this in probably two different parts here. So let's move some cardboard out of the way. And wow, that is the charger right there. That is tiny. Okay, so this is interesting. So let's get this out of the way. I don't think there's anything left in the box. Nope, let's throw that over here. And let's talk about the cable first. Now, the really awesome thing about this solution is that it does come with the NEMA 14 50 plug on the end of it. Now, the thing about that is, is that this charger is capable of charging a vehicle up to 48 amps. Now, if you follow this channel or other channels that review chargers or talk about electric vehicles, you probably know that there's an 80% rule when it comes to charging your vehicle uh, at home or really anywhere based on that circuit. So if you have a NEMA 1450 plug, that means the maximum that you can charge through that plug would be 40 amps. Now, I said before, this is a 48 amp charger. So it's 48 amp capable to deliver to the vehicle. So how are they giving a charger with that and a NEMA 1450 plug? Well, it's a great question. They actually give you instructions in the box here, which I'll show you in a little bit, that shows you how to cut the end off of this cable and then hardwire this into a junction box or however you need to do that. Um, and of course, consult an electrician or somebody certified in this matter to look at that or install that if you do choose to go with the hardwire version. But yeah, they're just basically telling you, hey, listen, if you don't want to plug it in, if you want the full potential of the 48 amps that this charger can handle, cut the end off of this and then you can hardwire it into a proper junction box in order for you to get your full 48 amps out of this charger. So I think that's a really cool way of doing it. It's basically like saying, listen, it's a hardwire charger, but if you don't want to hardwire it, we'll give you the plug to make it easy. But if you want to hardwire it, hire somebody to come in, cut the end off it, hardwire it into a box. You're good to go. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's nice to see that they give you that option. And I know for a lot of people out there, they're probably not going to want to do the whole cutting of this and then hardwiring it. And that's why I say, make sure you get somebody who's certified to do this type of work before you go doing it yourself. But the instructions are here in the packaging, which we're gonna go look into in just a minute, as soon as we get this unwrapped. But I wanna talk about this cable real quick. Now, this is a 30 foot charge cable. Three zero, 30 feet. That is a really, really long charge cable. Let me just tell you. So. That's really awesome to see. Now, a lot of times when I review chargers, I see a maximum of about 24, maybe 25 feet, depending on how they rate that length. Typically, when it comes from the bottom of the charging unit down to the end of the handle, it's usually about 24, maybe 24 and a half feet. Um, this is 30 feet. And so we're gonna measure what 30 feet actually means to Apex Charger. Sometimes it could be 30 feet from, you know, the very end of the handle all the way to like the top of the charger, some weird way of measuring it. But we're gonna measure this and see what 30 feet is to Apex Charger. But besides that, an extra four or five feet of cable could be a selling point for a lot of people. So for me, like I have a 25 foot long garage. I have my charger way out in the, the, the back of the garage, if you will. And if I wanna to try to charge a car out in the driveway, well, it's really hard to do that with a 25 foot cable. The extra five feet that this would give me would get me out into my driveway pretty easily. And so that is really kind of cool to see. So I'm really curious to see how this is gonna fit and how long this cable actually is at the 30 foot supposed uh, 
number here. So let's go ahead and just dive into this a little further. Let's look at the charger, then we'll break down all the accessories. All right, so let's first start out with everything that we get in the box as far as accessories or little bits and pieces here, and then we'll take a look at the charging assembly and cable. So this is all the stuff that you get in the box. Now let's just kind of run down this real quick so we can get to the charger itself. So once again, the cable wrap or the cable mounting solution that they give you is a pretty standard solution. I've seen these in other chargers, nothing special, but it's nice to be included in the box. So once again, really nice. Has their Apex charger name on it. They give you the mounting screws and mounting anchors if you need those as well. So really, really nice. Once again, the adapter, as we spoke about before, a nice 80 amp J1772 to Tesla adapter. A couple other things, they got the screwdrivers. As I mentioned before, they give you a nice Phillips head screwdriver and they give you this nice triangle security screwdriver. I'm not really sure what they actually call that, but uh, they give you that because there is a security screw that you mount to this charger to keep it secured. So this way, if you do mount it in a public place outside somewhere, there'll be a small chance that somebody has that screwdriver laying around in their car and they'll steal your charger or something. So really nice that they thought about using a, a proper security screw for that. You have the screws and, and anchors for the mounting of the charger. Over here, you have the little mounting bracket, which is this really tiny box thing here and uh, four screws holds this to the wall and then you basically mount the charger to this and then you put the security th screw through the side and they give you a little cardboard uh, template to use as well if, in case you want to line this up first before you go screwing through the actual bracket. Let's go over some of the documentation they have. So they give you this really nice uh, kind of stickers here to put onto the charger in case you are running this off of a smaller circuit or if you you know are going to downgrade the circuit, they give you these stickers that you can put there so you can label the charger. And actually it looks like you can also label uh, what kind of circuit breaker amperage you have and the charging station itself. You can label that. We have our instruction manual here, just a really nice, it's a very small instruction manual. It gives you all the information about the charger, what the lights mean, what the screen means, everything that you get with the charger so you can verify everything came in the box that you needed. So that's kind of nice to see there as well. And then we also have some RFID cards here. So they give you two RFID cards. I really like the RFID card thing. I know it could be very useless or pointless for a lot of people, but in the event that you put this someplace, let's say at a place of business or even at your own home, and you don't want just your neighbor coming over, stealing your charger off the side of your house, plugging into their car and stealing your juice, right? Well, RFID cards could be really helpful in that situation where you can just lock the charger out from anybody other than whomever has the cards. Now, if you don't want to use the cards, you could disable the RFID portion of that charger. Like for myself, I'm going to leave this in my garage, so I'm not going to really need the RFID cards. But for those of you who would like the RFID cards, who think that this could be a, a helpful thing for you, useful in your scenario, then it's really nice to see that they include some RFID cards in the box as well. Now, the last thing I want to go over, because this is kind of important, is what I was saying before about having to cut off the NEMA 1450 plug if you wanted to hardwire this. Now, the really cool thing is they give you the stuff in the box that you need to make this happen. So, for instance, if you wanted to cut off the NEMA 1450 plug and hardwire this, well, they give you this instruction card on how to do it. So, they give you this right here. This shows you the process to do it. They give you the little ends here that you can crimp onto the, you know, the cables, the copper cables that when you cut it off and you have to put these ends onto those stripped cables there. And then they give you this really nice shrink wrap to kind of tie it all together from the cable to the actual wiring. So really nice they include all this stuff in the box. If for some reason you're, you're not comfortable doing this, they give you this reference card right here which is really nice. So this is a card that gives you assistance for local partners in your area. So Apex Charger partnered with uh, Qmerit as one of their partners, which is a really awesome big company nationwide that will help you install this. So you call up Qmerit, 
they will come out to your house with a local certified electrician and do this install. And you can feel comfortable that it's coming from a big company like Qmerit. They also partner with Utility Partners of America, and you can scan that QR code, which will take you to their website and help you identify who is in that network. So really nice to see. We also have this other card here that goes over how to set up the application for the charger, because obviously this is a smart charger, so it does connect to your Wi-Fi if you want it to, and you can control it from a phone. Obviously, you'll get some data from that as well, which is really cool. And it does appear to use the Smart Life app. Now, I've used the Smart Life app in the past for other chargers. It's a pretty basic app that is built, I think, for just pretty much anybody to use. If you have a charger, you can just basically say, hey, connect through our app, and then multiple devices and, or, or chargers can be used through this one single app to control um, multiple different brand chargers. So it's one of those things where I say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And this app seems to do everything you need to do when it comes to charging your electric vehicle. So once again, it's not broke. The Smart Life app seems to work and uh, Apex Charger decided to utilize them for their app integration. As opposed to building a brand new app from ground up, which could be such a hassle, this is a good place to start. And of course, they can always build an app down the road if they wanted to, and then move everything to there. So now that we've kind of seen everything that we get in the box, let's go ahead, let's take a look at the charger itself and the cable, the handle, everything. So let's dive into that next. All right, well, here it is, the Mach 1 by Apex Charger. So very, very light unit, very small, as I had thought when I was pulling it out of the box. So as you can see here, this is just, I mean, here's my hand for scale. I mean, it's only a little bit bigger than my hand. Um, and this is what mounts to the wall. And honestly, this is a pretty nice package for for what you get i mean this is really cool so very small screen on here i think it's just like a two and a half inch screen or so maybe three inch screen so not a huge screen but it should give you all the information that you need when charging your vehicle which is really cool that's all you really need is just a, a little indicator to show what you're doing not every charger comes with an information screen on it. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, something that everybody wants or needs, but for some people, it could be very useful. For instance, uh, I have a Ford Mustang Mach-E. Well, one of the biggest gripes I have about the Ford Mustang Mach-E is it doesn't tell you how fast you're charging in the vehicle. And it's really, really annoying to have that. And so at least if you want to take a quick peek, you can go over to the charger on your wall and say, okay, yeah, I'm charging at seven kilowatts or 10 kilowatts or whatever the case may be. So really nice that they give you a little information screen there. And we'll see exactly what you get on the screen as we get closer. It also has two buttons on the front here. There is a current button, which will allow you to on the fly adjust the current of the output of this charger. And we'll see what those increments are when we get it hooked up. And then we also have the delay button. Now, for those of you who live in an area where um, your electricity is cheaper at night, for instance, so you want to come home from work at, let's say, 5 or 6 o'clock, but you don't want to start charging till 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Well, you can hit the delay button, and it will delay for a certain period of time. Once again, we'll check that out once we get this installed. Now, on the charger itself, we have all the information on the side of the charger. So this is a really nice quick reference. So just to give you an idea, it has their name of Apex Charger, the model number, which is the Mach 1, which batch, it has Wi-Fi Bluetooth, its input voltage, which is obviously 200 to 240 volts AC, max output 48 amps at 11 kilowatts. Once again, if you hardwire, you could do a maximum of 48 amps if you have at least a 60 amp breaker. If you're going to use the NEMA 1450 plug, please make sure that you're going to downrate this to 40 amp maximum, and then you'll be okay using the NEMA 1450, providing that your circuit breaker is at least 50 amps on the NEMA 1450 plug. So it shows an IP54 rating. Now this is rated for outdoor use. Now an IP54 rating is 
pretty good. I typically, for outdoor use, I usually like to see at least like a 65 rating. That's usually what I like to see when it comes to outdoor chargers, but an IP54 will be perfectly fine. As long as you're not planning on spraying this with a hose or something, you know, directly, I don't see any chance of there really being water getting thrown into it. Um, but just keep in mind that IP54 is pretty good for outside, but IP65 would probably be just a little bit better if I had the choice. All right, so now that we've seen the charger, once again, we'll talk about the 30 foot cable. It does look, it does look a little bit on the thicker side. I'm not gonna lie. Um, we're gonna test this out. We're gonna see how easy it is to like loop the cable in the garage. Because it's 30 feet, it could get a little difficult at times to, you know, put it back on the cable management. And it all depends on how this cable material is. Is it easily bendable and pliable? Is it really good at making loops without getting all like kinked up and stuff. So we're gonna test that and see how easy it is to use this cable. Um, I could tell you that the jacket is actually different than I've seen on a lot of cables. Um, so we're just gonna be curious about giving that a test here in a little bit. On this side, we have the J1772 handle and the plug here. So really cool, they give you the, um, the rubber tether here if you wanted to just put this dust cover on when you're not uh, you know putting it into the uh, holster that they do include in the box which is nice so let's just take this off real quick let's take a quick look yep pins look pretty good in there looks nice and solid um, really nice this is really awesome so if you follow my videos on adapters and chargers this is one of my biggest gripes that I always have about chargers or charging handles or the adapters. This latch right here, the one that allows you to release it from the J1772 port on your vehicle. I see a lot of these that are plastic. And what that means is not only is it easier for it to break, but it's easier for you to bend it and it's easier for you to you just have an issue down the road basically because this is a safety feature when you push down on this button it releases this latch and it also indicates to the charger this button has been pushed discontinue power from the charger because they're going to be disconnecting it from the car because if for some reason you do not disconnect the power before you unplug it from the car, you could potentially cause an arcing between the charging handle and the vehicle. So we do not want to see that happen. And it's really nice that this safety mechanism is actually made out of steel. So this way it's a lot harder for it to break. You also have the fact that most of it is underneath the plastic handle, which means that a lot of it is protected from if you were to drop it, let's say. So if you were to drop this handle onto your garage floor or a hard surface, most of this is protected. But even if it does hit a part of this latching mechanism, it's made out of metal. So there's a very slim chance that you're going to deform or break this uh, due to droppage, which is really nice to see. Of course, they have their Apex Charger logo on both sides of the handle, and um, the handle itself looks pretty good. It does have this grip texture on the bottom here. It's plasticky more than rubbery, but I mean, it's just a grip texture for you to hold on to this when you know you have your gloves on or it's in the middle of winter time and you're, you know, maybe it's covered in a little bit of ice. You wanna just kind of grab this handle and be able to plug it into your car. So really cool there. Once again, we'll take a look at this cable when we get it down to the garage. Now, one of the big things I wanted to bring up about this product is its certifications. Now, Apex Charger claims to have a lot of certifications on this charger. So not only does it have the standard FCC certification, which is just for wireless stuff, not all that important, but it also has a CE certification, a UL certification, and also an ROHS certification. So these are all very important certifications to have on the charger, and it is the entire charger that is certified, not just certain bits and pieces, which is great to see. The last thing I wanna bring up before we jump down to the garage and get this hooked up is its warranty. Now, this comes with a five-year warranty, five years on this charger which is really awesome to see. Not many on the market come with a five-year warranty. A lot of them don't come with a three-year warranty. Most of them are one year. Some of them are even less than that. So to see a five-year warranty 
is really class leading when it comes to EVSE equipment. The other thing that they're really cool about is their support. So they have 24 seven support. So if you need to call them 24 seven, 365, they are available by phone for a call to assist and help with any issues you may be having with the charger, whether it be setting up or even just getting, you know, things plugged in and ready to go. If you have questions about any of this stuff, they are there to assist you 24 seven. And so that's really cool to see that they are putting so much effort into not only the product, but also their support team to get this uh, product line up running and to be one of the better EV chargers, EVSEs on the market. All right, well, I think we've pretty much covered all of that now. Sorry for it taking so long, but let's jump down into the garage right now. Let's get this hooked up, mounted to the wall, and let's start charging some vehicles with it. We'll see you down there. All right, everybody, will you join me down in the garage here with the bracket already mounted to the wall. As you can see, we just have four screws to put this into the wall, very simple, along with the cable wrap holster here where we have that screwed into the wall as well. And here we have the Apex Charger Mach 1 ready to be mounted to the wall. So we have this bracket on the back of the charger with these four fingers on it here. And what these are gonna do is these are just going to go into uh, these four holes here, pretty simple. We're gonna head and just set this in there, see how well this works. Ah, okay, there we go. All right, so there we go. So we have the unit already mounted to the wall here. Now there is a place on the side here where you can mount those security screws. So you have one on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and mount one of them on this side here just to have it secured to the wall. But you can do that for both of them if you like. You could put the screwdriver, tuck it behind here with the screw on the end of it and put those security screws in. So let me get one of those. And once again, this is going to be the little triangle security tip screwdriver that they give you in the box. All right, and there we go. So now it is secured to that bracket on the wall. All right, very good. All right, so now that we got this all set up, let's go ahead and get these cables unwound here and see what we need to do. So let's go ahead. So as we can see here, we have a pretty large NEMA 1450 pigtail, which is really nice to see. So this is good for a couple reasons. You know, as you can see here, we have plenty of slack here for doing this loop. But even if you had to, let's say, you know, wanted to run the charger closer to, you know, a certain part of your garage, but your plug was stuck back in here, you can actually run this charger an extra foot or so in this direction, still have plenty of pigtail to plug it in and stretch it a little bit on top of the fact that you get this 30 foot cable here, uh, which is still very impressive. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing unwrapped and put onto our cable holster here. All right, so now that we've got the cable sort of wrapped up here, let's go ahead and talk about the cable and the length and the connector and all that stuff. So I went ahead and measured the cable and from the very end of the J1772 connector here, all the way to about this part of the charger was about 29 and a half feet, maybe a couple inches more than that, maybe 29 feet, eight inches or so from the best I can measure with this. So you are looking at about a 30 foot cable. Maybe they're counting the couple extra inches that are inside of the box here, but basically it's about 29 and a half feet, give or take, from the very end of the J1772 to the actual EVSE unit. Now, a couple other things I wanna talk about. As you can see here, I have a couple decent loops here on this hook here. Now you see I have some really large loops and that's because this cable is actually really thick. It is actually really thick. Now that I got it out of the box and I'm looking at it and I'm taking uh, you know, a, a closer look at it, this is a really thick cable. And so it makes it a little difficult to make number one, these loops. Cause as you can see, this looks pretty good, right? But what you see on the floor here is just an absolute mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes here while I'm talking to you about this charger and just try to loop this a little bit more for you, just so you can kind of get an idea. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I wanted to talk about not only the cable here being a pretty decent length, but also wanted to talk about how this right here, this holster cable wrap is kind of too small for this cable. Because the cable is extra long, 
and because the cable is extra thick, uh, this doesn't really do very well, unless you make these really large loops. As you can see, I have to make some pretty large loops here just to get this to, um, to fit all on that cable wrap there. So this could definitely, <laughs> this is just, this is, this is a bit much, I'll be honest with you. Um, look, look, now it just wraps itself back up here. Like I'm trying to twist away from the loop to try to get it to not twist. And I honestly, it's hard to tell which way you need to go with it. It's, and then you gotta do this. Ah. And that maybe. Yeah, so yeah, that, I think my biggest gripe with this whole thing is just, this cable is just not conducive to being able to be bent properly and to be moved into, you know, this type of shape. Um, and when you have something like this, this is the type of stuff that usually just ends up getting, you know, aggravating, and then you just kind of leave the cable out and you never wrap up the cable after that because you just like, I, I don't have 10 minutes to spend, you know, after unplugging your car in the morning, you're getting ready to go to work. You're like, I'm not gonna wrap this up for 10 minutes trying to get this thing all on this cable management. And then, you know, if you make the loops too, too small, then you're not gonna have it. As you can see, this one's already kind of over the edge here. And I still have at least another loop in this cable that I would like to put up here. Not a big fan of the cable. Um, it's just a little thick and just a little bit difficult to put into loops. It's a little difficult to, ma to manage and to handle this thing, uh, especially on like a daily basis. Uh, looking at the connector again here, so we're gonna get this plugged into a vehicle here just a bit. We're gonna put it through its uh, typical three hour test that we normally do. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this plugged in, powered up, and uh, see how well it does. I'm also noticing that this little sticker here that said, you know, peel off. Um, it was just kind of sitting here at the bottom. I don't know, I'm assuming there's some sort of plastic on here that should come off because this is pretty scratched up. I, but I don't know how to, there we go. All right, there we go, now that looks better. All right, so we got the charger mounted here. We got that plastic off the screen. That was a little bit difficult. Um, we could take a look at the charger real quick. We could see that the finish on here is a very like matte black almost. Um, just a plastic, this is all plastic unit, really no metal or anything on the outside of it. We could see that I already got a couple scratches in the unit already, um, just from you know handling it the last couple of minutes here. So this is probably very vulnerable to like scratches and marks and, and you know anything that you rub up against this is probably gonna end up uh, causing some sort of mark on this, especially like fingerprints and stuff. I could probably see a lot of fingerprints happening on that. But um, overall, it's it's a unit that sits on the wall anyway, so it's not like it's gonna get thrown around or moved a lot. So yeah, if it gets a little scratched up, it's kind of no big deal, just as long as the inside of the unit is working properly. So once again, we have our NEMA 1450 plug, and I kind of forgot to mention before that this is a very nice plug. They got it molded into the uh, socket here which is really nice or the plug i should say and so this looks like a really well done uh, nema 1450 end on it once again the pigtail is kind of long as well so even though you might lose a couple extra inches on the actual cable side from that 30 feet that we mentioned before at least this is kind of extra long so if you wanted to you can mount the charger you know almost two feet from the actual outlet in your garage so maybe you could gain a couple extra of inches there but overall i gotta say this is pretty good once again, if you're going to hardwire this, you know, you would be cutting off the NEMA end here, like somewhere down here, a couple inches, and then you would have some sort of junction box that you would wire this up into for that connectivity. Um, but I like how they give you the option to do that. So if you wanted to do it this way, you can do it with a NEMA plug, or if you wanted to cut this, do it hardwire, you could do that, no big deal. Once again, you're restricted to 40 amp charging using the NEMA 1450 plug. You cannot use the maximum 48. So we wanna make sure that uh, we look into how we do that before we go charging a car. And uh, we wanna make sure that that's not something that gets you know, changed by a mistake, let's say. And uh, you, know, you don't wanna charge your car for eight hours uh, at 48 amps on a NEMA 1450 plug since that's technically 
against code. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this plugged in like so. Ugh, all right, plugged in real nice. Let's go ahead and flip that breaker, get this on, see what we get on the screen, and then we'll get to some testing. All right, now you join us with the unit turned on for the very first time. So it looks pretty cool. So once again, this small screen here, maybe about two and a half inch, you know, diagonal screen uh, looks pretty good. So it says status currently unplugged, which is true because the plug is right here. We have a session time. So it gives you the amount of time that has been plugged into a car. Its current state is idle. So I assume that'll change in a little bit once we uh, get there. The current is currently set for 48 amps and we can see the current power is zero kilowatt. Once we plug it in, I'm sure we'll see a number pop up there. Our voltage currently is 245 volts coming into this unit, which is good to see. Our temperature is currently at about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you can see we also have our delay timer as well. Once again, it has a delay function, the buttons right here, where you can set a delay if you come home from work and you want to wait for a few hours before you start charging your car, just due to the current power rates around your area or whatnot. So that's pretty cool there. So looks like we got all the relevant information that we need to make this work. So in the meantime, let's get this connected to our app and then we'll dive into charging the vehicle. Okay, well, unfortunately I forgot to record the part about me setting up the app. I completely missed the record button on that one. But just to kind of give you, I'm gonna put a screenshot here of what I was doing as I was setting up the app. It was literally, I opened up the Smart Life app. As I opened up the Smart Life app, boom, the charger popped up and said, would you like to add this charger? I clicked on add charger. It then basically said, do you want to connect it to this Wi-Fi? I said, yes. It connected it to the Wi-Fi and within one minute from the time I opened to the app, I already had access into the charger on my phone. Really quick, really simple. I literally didn't have to search for anything. I didn't have to go out and say, I want to connect to the charger and then I want to connect that to the Wi-Fi, and I want to do that. It literally said, do you want to add this? Yes. Put in your Wi-Fi information if you didn't already have it. Mine was already saved in there. And boom, it went straight into connecting the charger to my Wi-Fi, to the internet, on the app, and I was ready to go in less than a minute. That is fantastic way of doing things. So that is awesome to see. Anyway, now that we got this plugged in, I wanted to test one more thing while we had the app open, which was the current, which right now this is set for 48 amps on the charger. Now, I can change that on the app through the settings. If I go into settings and I say change current, and I say I wanna change this to 40 amps, we should see that change here, which it does. Now, the question is, can I still change this here from here? on the charger itself. So I'm gonna hit this button and it's gonna to go to six amps. All right, interesting. So we're gonna hit the button again, eight amps, 10 amps, 13 amps, it's a weird number, 16 amps, 20 amps, 24 amps, 32 amps, 40 amps, 48 amps. Okay, so you can override what you get in the app uh, through the charger itself. So you do have to make sure that if you're going to charge a car, I highly recommend that you verify what the amperage is on this unit before you plug in. Because if somebody happened to come into the garage and change the amperage, like if they just pushed the button to change it and it went from 40 to 48 and you didn't realize it, um, that could be a problem down the road. So I would definitely recommend that you change or verify the amperage on the unit before you go plugging it into a car. And we can see here in the app, it changed back to 48 amps as well. So really cool how this changes the app and the app can change this. But what I really like to see is a function where it can lock out certain amperages. So this way you're not um, overdoing what your circuit can do. I really love the option of being able to change it on here, but I'd really like to see an option of being able to lock out the higher amperages that you couldn't use because of your rating on your circuit. Okay, anyway, let's get over to the car, get it plugged in, and see how well this charges. All right, everybody, well, you join me now down at our 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. We have our Apex charger handle here with the J1772. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged into the vehicle. We're also gonna see how the insertion is of this going into the vehicle, make sure that it's proper, make sure it feels right, make sure it's not too tight, make sure it's not too loose, and kind of go from there. Then we're gonna start our charging session, take some temperatures just from baseline temperatures. It's about 65 degrees outside today or so. So we're gonna take those baseline temperatures, see how everything starts, 
and then we'll keep three hours of this charging and see how well it goes. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, that felt pretty good going in. Now it's not gonna start charging yet because right now it's set up to use the RFID. Um, and so we're gonna show you that part as well. But let's go ahead, I just wanna do one more time. I wanna unplug. All right, so we're gonna go plug it right back in here. Okay, feels pretty good going in. Feels like the pins line up really well. Little bit of a wiggle, but really not that bad. I feel like this is pretty firm in there. All right, so as you can see here, we have our current sent for 40 amps now. We have our RFID card here, which should start charging the vehicle. All right, that sounded pretty instant. I heard the click. Here we go, we see charging now. It sees uh, this, little, this little thing here. It's doing this little circle around there. It's pretty good. We can see our temperature's up to about 82 degrees now. Voltage still around 245. And our amperage is starting to ramp up. So we should see that max out at about 40 amps. In the meantime, let's go ahead and do some temperature tests just for some baseline. So just here at the plug, we're looking at about 70 degrees. And we'll just make sure 70 degrees. Yep, about 70 degrees there. Currently ramping up 19 amps so far. As you can see, the Mustang Mach-E is starting to accept charge. And we'll just take some baseline temperature. So 70 degrees, 70 degrees, throughout this entire thing right now, which is good. And as we can see, we are ramping up. So we are at 34 amps, 38 amps. We got a really cool blinking green Apex charger logo right here. That probably looks pretty cool in the dark. 39 amps, so there we go. So we are fully, pretty much maxed out as far as what my circuit will allow. Once again, 48 amps capable, but that is if you have a hardwire connection. I would not run 48 amps through a NEMA 1450. So I think that's where it's gonna stay is about 39 amps according to this here. Nine kilowatt is what we are putting into the car. 82, 84 degrees now, so we'll see how that creeps up as well. I love having that you know, uh, temperature unit right there on the display. That's really helpful sometimes when you're just trying to make sure that your charging unit's not overheating, especially if you mount this outside. So yeah, looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, we'll come back to this in three hours. All right, everybody, welcome back. After three hours of charging, or just about two hours, 57 minutes, which is what we're currently at, we are still pulling 39 amps at nine kilowatts. Shows our voltage still. Our temperature in the unit has crept up to about 123 degrees, but it has stayed pretty stable around that 120, 123. It's also gotten a little warmer outside, probably in the low 70s as of right now. So this is all looking really good. And just a quick touch test around the actual unit seems to be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead, take some temperatures throughout this entire assembly here, see how things are holding up. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. So let's just take a shot of the plug real quick. So it looks like the plug is just about 98 degrees, 99 degrees. I'm just gonna touch that real quick. Yeah, a little warm, but I don't believe that is outside of any, uh, you know, normal temperature range. Let's go ahead and hit this cable right here. About 96, that's good. Let's go to this side of the cable. And that's about 90 degrees there. So let's just take some temperatures on the unit itself. Yeah, about 81. A little warmer up top. 86. 81, yep, definitely seems to be warmer towards the top of the unit, which makes sense since the hot air does rise. About 81, so yep, let's start with this cable right here. About 89 degrees close to the units. Yep, so about 91 degrees there at the cable, really not too bad. Let's just try down the cable a little bit more. We immediately start cooling off a little bit. Let's go down here on the cable. Yeah, about 81 degrees. All right, so let's head over to the other side here and get some ideas. About 84 degrees right there at the end of that cable. Yep, really cool on the handle here, which is pretty typical. And uh, let's just go ahead and take some temperatures on the actual close to the car here, 82, 83. About 87 there. Yep, and the car itself is about 
83, 84. So really not too bad overall. Once again, it's about 70 something degrees outside. And um, yeah, the cable seems to be pretty cool. We can even do just a quick touch test of everything. Just wrapping my hand around here. I can definitely feel that there's really no hot, hot spots anywhere. Handle feels nice and cool by the grip. The cable here feels perfectly fine. And then coming over to this end, you know, yep, you feel a little bit of warmth there, but nothing that's really all that hot. Same with that there. Yep, and then the plug once again. Pretty cool, not too bad. All right, let's, uh, let's finish up this part of the review. All right, everybody, will you join me now? Three hours after the car has been charging at a roughly nine kilowatt charging speed. As you might have just heard, the fans have just cooled down. They finally turned off. They've been kicking on and off throughout this charge, so the battery has been definitely getting warm. So once again, touch test, everything feel pretty good. Temperatures throughout this entire thing have been pretty good for the last three hours. Once again, ambient temperature of around 70 degrees outside. And uh, we've charged the car up quite a bit. I think we're around 70% right now. And so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna test the safety feature of this handle. So once again, we're gonna be pushing down on this really nice uh, metal uh, disconnect button here. And that'll help us unlatch and disconnect the charge. So let's push down on this button and see what happens. All right, exactly what we need to see. This has disconnected charge from the charger as I hold down the button. Now we're gonna pull this out. Feels really good coming out, no restrictions whatsoever. All right, well there is our three hour test for this unit and so far it seems to be holding up pretty well. So now at this point, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be using this as our normal everyday charger to charge up both of these vehicles for the next roughly two weeks and see how the charger holds up. Do I have any functionality issues with it? Do I have any issues with the charger overheating? We're gonna be testing the adapter with my Tesla as well. So we'll be charging up the Mach-E and the Tesla with this charger and seeing how that process goes. One of the other things I wanted to talk about real quick was the RFID card. Now, for some reason, you do not want to use the RFID card for this unit you can actually enable the plug and play feature or the plug and charge feature, which basically all that requires is you to tap the card, hold down the delay button for five seconds, and then this should enable the plug and charge feature. All right, so now it says status plug and play. And if you want to change it back from that to using the RFID cards, you can actually just tap the card again, hit the delay button for five seconds, and it will revert back to requiring the use of RFID cards. All right, so I'll be using the charger like that without the RFID cards for the next two weeks, and we'll see how well this charger holds up. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a second. All right, everybody, welcome back. So it's been a little over two weeks since we've set up the Apex Charger Mach 1 EVSE here in my garage for me to use on a relatively normal basis with my vehicles. And so what I have to say is overall, the charger itself works really well. I really haven't had any issues with the charger. The functionality of it has been perfectly fine. It has charged up not only the Ford Mustang Mach-E with the J1772 plug, but also the Tesla Model 3 utilizing the once again included uh, J1772 to Tesla adapter. So once again, really cool to see that Apex charger is including the adapter in the box with you so you can utilize this to charge up either your Tesla vehicle or just natively your J1772 vehicle. So really cool to see that that is uh, included in the box at 80 amps. Charging up the Tesla Model 3 did not cause any issues. Utilizing this adapter seemed like it was working pretty well but I actually might do a full thorough testing and review of this adapter in the future because you can buy this separately. It is listed on their website as a purchasable item, as an adapter for your Tesla vehicle. So I think that's pretty cool that not only do they, you know, include it in the box, but if for some reason you just wanted to buy an extra one of these adapters, you can. Now let's talk about my experience with the Apex Charger Mach 1. So overall, I gotta say that Really nothing big stands out about this charger. It's a pretty typical charger. 
NEMA 1450. The size of the charger is relatively small compared to some other EVSEs I've seen on the market. So it's really nice to see that they made such a decent product in such a small package. So if you do have some size constraints of where you're gonna mount this, you know, this one probably comes in as one of the smallest EVSEs on the market, which is nice. It's only, you know, a few inches off of the wall. It's only about a foot tall or so. Dimensions will be in the product description down below if you wanna take a look at that. So pretty good there. I do like how it gives you some functionality as far as a delay feature. You could come home from work, have it set for a delay. It'll just delay your charging up to that point and then start charging. You can also adjust your current speeds from the EVSC window here, the front panel. So you can do stuff like that right here. Of course, you do have the functionality through the Smart Life app. The Smart Life app is really one of those apps that's used by a lot of companies to you know, manage uh, certain products. Like I was mentioning before, one of the things that I've seen recently is uh, level two EVSCs that you can control your charging speed and your charging statistics. You can see all that stuff through that Smart Life app. And it's very basic. It doesn't give you a lot of information, but it gives you, I think, enough information, enough for people to just kind of understand what's going on, how fast it's charging, how much you've put into the car since you've plugged it in. Very basic things can be seen in the app, and I think that's perfectly fine. Would it be nice to see an actual first party app from Apex Charger for their chargers? Yes, absolutely. And maybe that's something they work on in the future. But right now for their entry level first EVSE, might as well borrow something that already works. So once again, the app works pretty good, but you also get this nice display screen. Now it is a little bit of a small screen, but really I don't think you're gonna be necessarily needing to read this from like across your garage. This gives you some very basic information, you know, the status of the plug, how long the session is going for, your current speed. So you can, once again, you can adjust with the button and your current speed will adjust accordingly on the screen. It shows your power in kilowatts, your voltage coming into the EVSE, your temperature, which I assume that's an internal temperature of the unit. So right now it shows about 98 degrees. It's only about 75 something outside right now. And uh, you can see if you have a delay set, it'll show you how many hours that delay is set for. So a pretty cool, pretty interesting information screen here. I think that's a really cool addition to a lot of EVSEs on the market. I think they can be very helpful. And I think that in this case, uh, this is good. This is a good size. It gives you everything you need for a entry level EVSE for your garage. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And I was making some comments about this earlier in the video, and that was about this cable. So what do I love about this cable? Well, it's nearly 30 feet in length. So 30 feet in length of cable is fantastic. Now that could very much be a selling point for a lot of people. Are you looking for an EVSC that has a charging cable more than 25 feet? Well, there really isn't that many on the market, if any at all, actually. And the only ones that I could think of are Apex chargers. So not only does the Mach 1 have a 30 foot cable, but also the Mach 2 charger will have a 30 foot cable as well. So I think that is really cool. Now, my biggest gripe with this charging cable is just its, its, size, its size and its material. Um, it's a very, I would consider this to be like a plastic coated rubber, I guess is what I would consider this. Now that's probably good for protection. It's probably really good for, you know, longevity outside. Like if you were to mount this outside, you'd probably have pretty good longevity with this cable, but it is really difficult to bend and to just get in the proper shape that you want it to. And so this really is my biggest gripe with this entire unit is this cable. Now, once again, if you're looking for a charger with a 30 foot cable or more than 25 feet, this might be the one that you need to look at. But if you're looking for a charger with a pretty decent cable that you can easily just maneuver and then put back in loops on the charger, then well, this is probably not the one. This has gotta be, and I'm gonna say it, one of the worst charging cables I've ever reviewed on a charger. So I think they could go back. I think they can make this better. I think they can make it a lot easier to just maneuver. You know, I, I'm really afraid to see what this thing's like in the cold. You know, if you were to mount this outside and it's 35 degrees outside and you come out in the morning and you go to unplug your car, I don't think there's a chance you're gonna get this cable to really wrap 
into proper loops on to any holster or any uh, cable management at that point. I just don't think it's going to be physically possible because of just the way the material this cable is. So that is my biggest gripe with this entire thing is just this cable. Now the length is great, but the cable material and how it bends is just it's just not not very good. As far as the J1772 side go, handle is fine. The insertion of this plug perfectly fine, not only into the adapter, but also into our Mustang Mach-E. Uh, the um, latching mechanism, probably one of the best ones I've seen on the market. You know, you have a nice metal latching mechanism here that latches to your vehicle, so you can't really bend this. If you drop it, there's a really small chance that you're going to break this mechanism. Obviously the mechanism being hidden under the plastic is also a great feature, so I love seeing that. So I got to say that from this perspective, the J1772 perspective, I think they did a pretty good job. The actual uh, casing of this is plastic. Most of them are plastic. You're not going to really see much different materials on here. Sometimes some people make like a rubberized plastic on this, so it protects it a little bit more from impacts, but as far as this one goes, it's pretty decent, even though it is made out of a plastic. Of course, you get your tether in the cap, works perfectly fine, sits there on the end of the J1772, nothing, nothing special there. And of course, you have the included holster and cable wrap. So let's talk about this. Now, this particular holster and cable wrap is a very commonly used basic one that you see on the market. A lot of budget uh, EVSCs on the market will come with this specific cable wrap and holster. Now, two things about this particular situation is if you want to put all 30 feet or roughly 30 feet of cable onto this cable wrap here, you do have to make some fairly large loops here, like probably about that, maybe like a three foot, two and a half to three foot diameter loop in order to fit all of the cable. Just due to the thickness of this cable, it gets very difficult to try to make um, smaller loops and then put the cable, because it just starts to come over the, uh, the edge of this cable management here. So you do have to make some fairly large loops in order to get this to actually sit uh, properly in the cable management. As far as the holster side, it's a pretty standard J1772, um, you know, tolerances. You just, this just sits in here. The latch latches into a small mechanism that holds it, and that's pretty much what it is. So I think overall, my opinion of the Mach 1 by Apex Charger is pretty good. I think there's a few things they could work on. Number one, this cable. This has to go. This has to be changed. I think the length is great. 30 feet, perfect. I think if you're going to look for a lot of people who are in the market who are going to want a long cable, whether that's, you know, because it's going to be outside for public use, you know, if you're putting this in a parking lot or something, uh, your 30 foot cable is great. I also think for personal use, like for instance, for me, like I was mentioning before, if I wanted to charge a car out in my driveway, well, now this makes it much easier because I have the extra four and a half, nearly five feet of cable to make that happen. And so I'm really impressed with the length of the cable, but the cable itself has to be redesigned and uh, definitely different material to be used. The holster, I'd like to see a slightly better holster and cable wrap. I typically like to see the uh, ones that hold this on a little bit of an angle. So this way it's not sticking too far out from the wall because right now it sticks, you know, almost a good foot and a half out of the wall with the cable. And so if you have kind of a smaller garage, like width-wise, like I do. Um, getting out of the car is hard enough, but let alone trying to walk past this, sometimes gets in the way of ingress and egress out of the car. So I would like to see a slightly better holster and cable management for this. But once again, this is their budget, a little bit entry-level EVSE. So this is not an expensive one by any means. You're not paying six or seven or eight hundred dollars for this EVSE. So really, you know, you can't expect to have everything to be perfect. And I think for the package that you get, I think this is a pretty good package for that price. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the Apex Charger Mach 1 that we've been using now for a little over two weeks. I think it's a great charger. I think if you're looking for a nice entry level EVSE, well, I think this might be the proper one for you, especially if you need a long cable to run, as long as you don't mind a little bit of a stiff cable for sure. 
Anyway, thanks again for watching. And of course, I'd like to thank Apex Charger for reaching out to me for this review and taking a look at this charger. I think it's a great charger and I'm really looking forward to some future products of theirs. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's episode. And of course, if you're interested in the Apex Charger Mach 1, go ahead and take a look down in the description below. You'll see a link right there. It'll take you to this charger. Thanks again for watching today's episode and we'll see you on the next one. And remember, welcome to the future. Welcome to Tech Motoring. We'll see you soon.